Hello everyone, and welcome to Drake Mix. Unreal Engine 5's Nanite is magic and allows for basically infinite polygons, so I wanted to sit down and use a select number of assets and just keep adding to a scene freely until I got bored. Considering this is sort of a stress test, I also wanted to use ALS V4's first person character controller to walk around the level in real time. Here we go! Where Nanite and Lumen is at its strongest is lots of repeated assets, so I wanted to make sure that the scene was able to use a select few modular pieces. In doing this, I decided on designing my own type of liminal space, a sprawling, multi-dimensional repeated library. For this scene, I wanted a first-person character controller a bit more complex than the default template, so, as I mentioned, I migrated over the blueprints from ALS v4. Nothing is simple with this pack though, so I had to make sure to copy the project settings as well before it actually functioned. Then for the rest of the assets you see, I browsed the Megascans library for a bunch of 3D materials to work with. Most of them come from the Poland category for some reason, but they look really great. assets laid out in the background and those get deleted later, but the reason I have those there is so I could set up all the collisions before I started building the level so then I could just focus on the actual design. I found a free to use bookshelf model on TurboSquid, which is pretty important considering this is a library, so here I'm just setting up the materials for those and then copying them throughout the scene. key points about liminal spaces is the feeling like you've been there before. So I tried to be really open in my creative process and try to interpret what was in my head freely so I could relate to the space more. Having a limited number of assets is in a strange way sort of freeing as it allows me to focus more on the level as opposed to making everything feel consistent. As you can see, I've just used stretched out cubes for the floors and foundation of the library. Under the modeling tools, there's a projection option which allows me to control how the textures are placed. Megascans library. While you're working, you can have more assets downloading in the background so you never have to waste time just waiting for loading screens. When all is said and done here, over 20,000 assets are placed within this scene. Everything being modular allows me to click things together super quickly and enter a flow state. Time really melted away making this one. So going about level design, I was smart this time. Since I plan to have the scene be symmetrical down the center, I only made half a scene. At the end, I duplicate this section three more times to create a gigantic, multi-tiered level. You'll 
notice I jump around a lot as I build a level. It's hard for me to just focus on one section and stick to it, so I'll add a couple assets on one corner and then jump to the opposite side. This is definitely not the most efficient way, but I would argue it's the most fun way to do this. I wanted to focus on layering, using multiple assets in front of one another as it goes up and down. This way, none of the walls feel too flat and it feels much more ornate. Constantly flying around the map also gets me more inspired and helps me find some holes to plug up. Here I'm trying to get a bit more organized because we're about to get crazy. I wanted to duplicate this scene, so I just selected all of it and copied it around, and somehow, as you can see, this engine is not crashing. Every time I moved this giant mass of assets, my computer heaved down to like 12 frames per second, but it corrected itself and I was able to keep going. done expanding the scene though. I then started working on a stairwell to go down to another layer with the intentions to copy everything again. It's kind of interesting making a level from the inside out like this, you kind of have to invert your brain. I didn't use a lot of reference for this piece, I just looked at the assets in creative ways and then tried to figure out how far I could stretch them. nearing completion, I just needed to patch a few more holes before I selected everything again. At this point, I hadn't even remotely optimized this scene, so I switched over to an unlit mode so I could keep working on it freely. And here we go. With everything set up, I put everything back into folders and prepared to copy it all again. I had no idea if this was going to break the project entirely, but the point of this was a stress test, so... I saved the project, selected everything, and crossed my fingers. My computer actually began to scream when I pressed paste, but it worked, and I almost instantly had quadrupled the size of our scene. After that I made some mistakes off camera which completely busted the lighting, but I was able to fix that and added a final wall to the piece while also deleting a bunch of lights because at that point I was like 2000 megabytes over budget which is really bad. But after I got it all optimized and the lights had been dialed back significantly to a usable point, I dropped into the ALS V4 character controller in first person and had a walk around. I hope you enjoy!
for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.